Hi everyone, I wanted to connect with you on Chapter 15, Health Information Technology by Philip Roth in our book. And I'm going to go through some of these slides a little bit quickly. Um, I know you can read about the history, uh, but I really want to talk about these government initiatives to support implementation of health information technologies. So we see it started in the 60s uh, with President Kennedy. Uh, we go into the, the 60s and the 80s and what was happening in the development and I hope you will listen to the Freakonomics or the TED Talk uh, by the woman who talks about how the government uh, subsidized innovation and uh, we see President Bush and President Obama that were uh, incentivizing um, physicians and healthcare systems to go to electronic mechanisms medical records because for 40 years they were really lagging, lagging behind all other industries in the use of uh, health information technology and um, really when we think about how much can be extracted from it uh, it's a wonder why it hasn't happened sooner. But uh, this chapter does give you some um, some of the frustrations like this point on historical overview lack of standardization continues to prevent interface across software platforms and it says that the lack of standardization but it's also proprietary information that companies uh, don't want to uh, interface across software platforms. They don't want to share their information to allow someone else to patch on or to uh, link uh, to their system and so uh, that is also part of this problem which um, may or may not be clear through the chapter. So um, President Obama's the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act uh, really uh, helped to pay physicians, pay healthcare systems to um, adopt uh, this use of electronic health records and um, if you go to this link which is in Canvas and and look up what eHealth really means um, talking about consumer eHealth programs but also the use of technology they're even considering that telehealth would be a part of this eHealth program uh, so visit that and do some reading on uh, to understand better what eHealth is and again, it is Wikipedia, but it's a good place to start with your uh, definition of what society is saying that term is. Uh, so with all uh, government programs, they have a lot of these abbreviations. Um, and, and so it gets a little frustrating. I find it a little frustrating to read. But again, electronic health records or electronic medical records doesn't allow the systems to interface with each other. Uh, even so far as sometimes the system that the uh, emergency room is using does not interface with the system that the floors are using, uh, which creates a lot of, um, well, it doesn't allow the system to use what it's supposed to be, the communication and the ability to um, use the data that's being collected. And, you know, it is, again, frustrating because we know that there's ways to do that. We know that the Apple system can read a Windows uh, system and, and interface in that way. And so why can't these uh, electronic health records interface that way? And I think that one of the pages does talk about um, HIPAA issues um, and uh, a lot of other reasons that they give for why this hasn't happened yet. Uh, so HIT is the Health Information Technology Implementation and we need the technology, we need the culture and I think that was an interesting part of the chapter as well. Uh, on page uh, 327 it talks about one gauge of readiness is the extent to which certain categories of people hold positions within the organization. And so that could be the, uh, the DMP. That could be you holding the DMP and creating a culture that says technology is good. Now, a lot of this chapter does talk about, um, you know, physicians holding back. I know of uh, stories of um, electronic medical records coming in and nurses leaving, nurses retiring or going to another uh, place that... Um, the, the fear or the lack of interest in, or the inability to adapt to the system of computers um, has been a, a barrier. 
However, we are now raising nurses. The nurses who are in my undergraduate classes now have grown up. They can type away. They can type away on a on a on a phone. They text so quickly, uh, where I'm slogging through and have to keep backspacing. And so we know that that culture is going to change. And and if you are um, uh, adapting to this, you can move it into the future um, to get everybody on board. Now the other part that was mentioned is the policies and procedures and how cumbersome they are and I thought uh, what was interesting about that point is that um, it mentions on the top of page 327 when a health information technology system is implemented it is common for many of the undocumented processes to become apparent for the first time undocumented or unknown work processes have been the root cause for many HIT implementation failures and so being aware of of uh, what is going on what is the policy what are the procedures that uh, I think is what it's saying is has to become a part of this record but also on using this record and then of course the technology and the ability to move the computers around the ability to go right into Wi-Fi have really improved a lot of things and again here's the policies and procedures that brings the undocumented procedures to light for the first time a cause for many of the systems failures uh, another part of this technical issue uh, of the culture was that the culture has to be sympathetic to the new users, has to provide the support. I have seen tremendous frustration when I've been a part of a system that was changing over. And, and I was in a computer-based system, but when the new system comes in and everyone has to change their buttons that they click and, and, and screens, it becomes very frustrating. It can be, and people get frustrated, angry, um, don't want to work with it. And yet, if there's enough technical help there, then it smooths things out. Typically, what I've seen is they first day, oh, let's have some people there to help you. Let's get the tech people in there to help you. Tech people talk differently than nurses think. Tech people use terms that nurses don't use. That's another barrier. But they have them for one day, and nobody can use it, learn a system for one day. They are not invested in keeping those tech people there or the super nurse there so that any question that comes up, because we all know questions come up with use and with problems. Somebody was on vacation as well, has an I learned it. So there really has to be that investment to have those extra staff there. Cost versus the benefit. I think right now we can see that the benefits are uh, good uh, in extracting data and, and in providing information to um, nurses and physicians and pharmacy and interconnections that way. I'm not uh, very familiar with cost um, and so um, that uh, if you're interested in that or if you're a manager, perhaps you can um, add to our knowledge about that. Okay, so the I, I kind of shortened this, took out some of the words, but really the driving force was to overcome human limitations. And this bottom sentence, combine humans' intuitive strengths and a computer's data retention strengths to have this hybrid of intuition and tireless data processing capacity that outperforms either element alone. And I think that is a really a great way to present it, a great way to think about it, uh, because uh, we know that we're human. We know that humans are, are fallible and humans can be distracted. Computers are never distracted, but humans don't, I mean, excuse me, computers don't have the intuition and so that combination is, is great. So you can learn those terms CDSS, CPOE, read about that in the chapter. Look at the barriers here, uh, high volume, voluminous complex data, HIPAA security and privacy regulations, no common platform, continuous advancements in knowledge and technology can be a barrier because things are moving very, very quickly.
So I'm sorry I'm going through this a little bit quickly, but I just wanted to touch on some of the points um, and you can, um, I will uh, download these slides so that you can uh, look them over more slowly or uh, to compare them to the book, but I did take out uh, several of them. Most HIEs are heavily subsidized by federal research grant funding. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with uh, whether your organization does um, have that uh, support. I do know that one uh, DMP student was a part of the VA system and used VA data and was able to direct her project because she could see the numbers and, and what um, the VA clients were, were getting and what days and uh, she developed a program of nurses getting data before the clients come for their final appointment, having them um, having them ready the day that they come to have this done, that done, and that done so that the results could be presented to the physician. It was really an, a really interesting project and used the data system of the uh, VA. So the Office of National Coordinator of Health Information Technology um, gives some information on these slides. We see here that really a very low percent of primary care physicians are um, using it. I wonder if this is greatly increased seven years later. So this data is a little bit dated. Hospitals. Um, the Abington Hospital has electronic medical records. My mother was hospitalized uh, recently. Uh, tremendous printouts with solid information. And um, I'm a member of the um, Abington system as well. I can pull up my lab results myself on the portal. And, um, you know, if I'm waiting for that cholesterol level, I can find it. I don't have to worry that a physician isn't. Now, that's the other part of uh, the issue is that when we talk about e-health, we have to have consumers that are literate in using the computer and in finding their health data. And so we have to work on that as well. What is the best system for that? And LaSalle has ado adopted um, a health literacy program, and a part of that is... Um, learning about electronic medical records and, and data that would be on there for the undergraduate students. So again, these are some um, data. We see pharmacies, tremendous amount of pharmacies using them, very um, good accuracy on those. And so read over the future challenges. Think about uh, electronic medical records, um, health information technology. This does have a place in your future. Uh, I would be interested to see how nurse practitioners versus uh, nurse anesthetists versus uh, ICU nurses versus surgical nurses uh, think about the differences between these and um, and whether they are practical for the program. I know sometimes there's a lot of extra boxes in those electronic medical records, but um, ultimately the data extraction <clears throat> is very helpful. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you.